All right, guys, so uh, today we're uh, working on this uh, Chevy Caprice Classic. This is a 1983, and uh, this car has a little bit of a problem with the windows. As you can see, if I turn the car on, the, uh, oh, there it goes, dead. So you kind of hear it moving in there a little bit, but it doesn't want to work. And it'll come back after a while. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the door panel off. Uh, we're going to investigate what's going on by the uh, window motor or regulator or whatever is maybe the switch we'll have to see what's going on but um uh, we're going to get into just taking the door panel off um and we're going to show you how to remove this uh this will work on basically 1977 through 90 caprice classic four door very similar with the two door as well but here we go okay so our first step here is uh, i'm going to remove the um the lock Call this the lock actuator. Uh, you know, this is what actually allows you to unlock and lock the doors manually. This just unscrews off a little shaft here. It's plastic. This comes right off. Okay, so our next step is we have a couple of screws on the door that we have to remove. There are two behind these little covers. There's uh, two in here on the armrest, and then there's one inside the trim that holds this trim plate on. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little tiny flathead screwdriver. We're just gonna get behind it and pop it off. Be very careful with these because they are brittle, especially on 80s plastic like this. So just very gently pry them out. So you can see the two little tabs. And here we have our screws, one and two. It's a big flathead. Um, and if, you, if your door handle is loose, that's how you tighten it. So these just come out of here. Most of these are riveted on. This door handle has fallen off over the years. Um, so you, know, you can see kind of the plastic disintegrating here. But um, Normally on the door panels here, there are two rivets per side on the door handles. Um, but this car, this car doesn't have it in, in, in this driver's side door. I don't know why. Maybe somebody drilled them out at some point. Who knows? But there should be four rivets holding this on. This should not come off in your hand like this. Okay, next up, we have two screws inside of the armrest here. And these just need to get taken out. They're chrome oval, oval head screws that are special, so don't lose them. You can see your specific trim screw. So this piece, what you want to do to disengage this is just pull forward and then up, like that. As you can see, here's the clip, and that has to engage this, and this clip has to engage this. So you push forward and then up, and it comes off. Now, in order to disconnect the electrical connector, this is just a screw-on thing. So you see it says twist off, so you just... Loosen it like this, over there. Now, sometimes these are extremely belligerent, other times they just come off like this, but you can see the pins, right? And uh, A is always the long one, you see here. Okay, next. Now, you'll notice there's two more screws here, but before we do that, we wanna take this screw out here. Okay, so. What we want to do is we just want to loosen this guy up. Take him out that way. Okay, now, in order to get this handle out, you want to pull the door handle and just slide her out like that. Okay, now we can work on taking this piece off. Now there's one, two, three, four screws on this. So, I'll take this one off, these out. This, again, we just take it off. We can slide it like that. Make sure the wiring harness comes out through here. And there's your 
armrest trim piece. I usually use a series of tools here. One of these plastic jobs or if you have a steel one or whatever. Now, there are, I forget how many, uh, but a series of plastic clips all the way around the door here. You can see them actually if you look underneath this. If you pull on this slightly here, you can see this clip right here. This white piece of plastic, that's the clip. So you can see, as we uh, loosen it up, that um, pops off, you know? So you can see it here. And there's another one right up here. I want to make sure you get behind it. Don't want to get in between it and the cardboard because then you're going to break the door panel card. You want to make sure that your tool is behind the um, clip. So those two are out. Alright, so there's another one right here. Get your tool in there, okay. Another one over here. Holy moly, there it is. Got it. There's one right right here where my finger is. So, put our tool in there and pop that out. This one already popped out, uh, so we only got one more somewhere in here. Which I think. Most of our stuff loose here. Um, the one tricky thing we're going to have is that the wiring harness for this switch is, uh, well, it's really in there, so we don't have a lot of room to move this. Um, so all of our clips are out. What we're going to try and do, oh, this one fell out, great. All right, what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and lift this up and off of the ledge here. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, that needs to be fixed. Uh, okay, I'm not sure that we have enough wire. Um, uh, we have enough uh, wiring harness length right here, so what I'm going to have to do is reach behind this. We're going to take this screw off here. It will come off. What we're going to try and do here now that we got the uh, off is just very gently pry this connector off of here. There we go. Okay, now we can safely uh, remove the door panel. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is before I do anything, I'm just gonna tuck this wiring harness underneath so I'm not yanking on it when it comes out. But so. see, comes out. Now our mirror cable is here. Okay, so what's holding this mirror cable in here is a two millimeter Allen key. So you can see it's right here. What we want to do is just loosen this enough that we can just slip this out. Now we can set our door panel aside. So what we're looking at here is first thing we're going to do before we troubleshoot anything else is we're going to make sure that this switch is not messed up or broken or doesn't work for some reason. So as you can see here, here we have 12 volt. This is uh, the bus. You can see the connections here, right? So this goes all the way through here, right? So we have 12 volt and then we have a path to up and we have a path to down on the circuit winding for the, um, the, the motor. So when we come here, if we do this, we should get nothing with the switch closed or open. And now if we close the switch in the down direction, 
you can hear the multimeter registering that there's a uh, um, connection and there's low resistance if you look at the meter. Okay, so our up direction works. Let's do that again on the down direction. I just want to see what the... Uh... So, what we're going to do now is make sure we're getting 12 volts here at the door. Um, so, we're going to put it in here. We're just going to ground it on the body somewhere. We're getting about 11.6. Eh. Um, that's okay, but not great. I don't know what the actual voltage on the car is, but you know, it is what it is. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we've got our, uh, since there's only two wires running to the motor here, we have our ground connected. So this one, here's ground, here's 12 volts. So what we're gonna do is we're going to jump 12 volts to this terminal, which will then send power this direction. So we'll go through the motor, come back here, and then to ground. All right. So that'll have the, the window go down. And then the opposite way, ground from here to there, and then 12 volts to there, we'll move the window up. So if we do this, we can see I fill with the that one up. It's stuck, but you can't see it on camera. But. So kind of hear it trying to go, but it just gets stuck. Here, try, but it just won't go. All right, so testing this. Come on. See. So we know the wiring works. I mean, I gotta hold that slammed against the ground over there, but it definitely works. It's almost certainly a motor issue. Alright, so we tested the wiring using this. Um, well, this is a motor from a Cadillac. It's not the reg motor, but it uh, works the same way. And it does work. So we're pretty confident that the wiring is all good. Um, and it's just the motor that's just, it's at it. So, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and find a motor. If we can't find another motor today, we're gonna have to order one and then uh, replace it later. So. Uh, we have our switch hooked up to the connector. We've removed it from the door panel. Here's our motor. We have our electrical connector from the door hooked up to our new motor. Now we're just gonna see. All right, that's down. This is up. Okay, so we know everything's working. Turn the ignition off. I'll disconnect all this. And then we're going to drill out the rivets to hold the uh, window regulator in the window and the door panel here, in the door, I should say. Alright, so one of the things we did first was we removed this plate. It was right here. Goes here, like that. There's two Phillips head screws that hold that on. But you can see here, they have all these rivets that hold this in. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Should be that. Should be five rivets that hold this in. So this is just an aluminum rivet. We're just going to drill the head off. get to it. Okay, so we're back. We have a new motor. Um, and we're going to take off these three screws for this cover plate here. Um, and uh, that's going to allow us access, a little bit better access into the window regulator here. Um, so these are just flat uh, full set screws. Uh, they're the same screw this plate on. Same size and everything. Okay. okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tape the window from falling in the door. 
So we're just gonna do one of these. Um, try and get it as best we can. Um, we'll probably put maybe one or two or more on here. Once we get our window nicely taped in place, we're gonna release these two bolts that hold the window regulator to the slide. Uh, well, the, I guess the the, bar, the vertical bar here that holds the window to this slide mechanism here. So this, uh, these two, they look to be 10 millimeter, but we'll see. All right, so uh, again, I have the window taped up, but I'm gonna just kind of stick my hand in here, try and kind of hold this in place, because I don't know how well that tape's gonna work. So now we're going to fish the regulator out of the door. <clears throat> this is going to be fun. I'm going to get cut like 6,000 times. watching this going, no you fool! It's not how that works. Alright. There's your window regulator. As you can see there's this plastic tape runs around and it loops through here and that connects to this. As the, as the motor spins it uh, pulls on this tape and that's what makes this go up and down. So uh, what we need to do is we need to remove this motor. We're going to put the uh, new motor on it. We're going to connect it to the terminal here and we're going to test it with the new motor in place. Actually, what we could do now is test this motor just how it is. Um, with nothing attached to it. I have a feeling it's not going to work, so... See? Mm. It dies. Right there. Done. Now it won't even go back up. Nope. So... Okay. Totally no. This motor is completely shot. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the three screws that hold this out. Well, this is clearly American, but I did not bring any SAE products out here with me. So we're just going to use a nine millimeter. And so this guy I'm going to take out of here. I'm going to save these because we'll reuse them. Nice bolts. Screws, whatever. Yeah, excellent shape. As you can see, this is a. This motor's not very old. Uh, How old do you think it is? A couple years. Yeah. Five years. They don't make them like they used to. <laughs> I think the rest of the, rest of the doors still have. What? Thirty-five-year-old window regulators. How old is this car? Uh, oh, it's probably older yeah. than that, actually. It's, uh... It's 38. 38-year-old window regulators, or motors, so... This one didn't even last five years, so... Anyway... Alright, so this just pops out, as you can see. Um, and you got some... Uh, we'll, put some new, we'll put new grease in there once we, uh... Throw this out. Oh, yeah, look! That's how old it is. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So we did this last time seven years ago. 
Uh, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to take this and clean it. So I'm going to clean this entire tape, all the goop off of here, everything. We'll try and um, spin this so that it uh, moves as much tape out as it can. Um, but uh, I, let's go in the garage and do that. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is basically cleaning the tape here. Uh, there's an awful lot of crud in this, and it's making it so that um, when I uh, attempt to move this piece here, as you can see, you can see how difficult this is to actually uh, run up and down the rail, and it shouldn't be that hard to move. Um, so what we're going to try and do here is clean this all up so that we can uh, uh, get as much of the junk out of it as possible and make it uh, move as smoothly as we can. So we put less strain on the motor. I'm um, actually moving this up and down. Um, and I'm just using some carbon choke cleaner here to clean this off as best I can. The only problem I have is that um, the tape is actually secured to this piece, and I'm not sure if we can get this apart. Damn it! Well, this just goes like that, so that's just a, a blocker from turning it all the way. Can we, can we disengage it? Because if you see, there's a little thing sticking up here and this is what actually runs it. I'm not sure if this plastic has gotten so hard that like, we don't have a snowball's chance in hell of, you know, doing anything here. Right, so we're being super careful. Just trying to pry this guy off. There we go. Uh, pull our tape all the way out of here. And we're gonna clean the entire tape all the way from front to back. And then we're gonna clean all of this, which actually, I think that must have taken most of it with it, but we're still gonna clean that a lot. Do, I have a brush here. I'm just going to put a little bit of lithium grease on this thing strategically on the back on the sliding surface as it goes through. Let's try and feed this in there. Right, that is the right way. Yes, no, possibly so. Again. Okay, so we're gonna get these four lined up. I'm gonna try and use this screwdriver just to get them all on there. Okay, and if we take up some of the slack here, there we go. All right. I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put some in there, so that'll act as a, it'll pick it up as it goes through and out. And then, so, let's 
on there. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Hopefully it'll be better. Now I'm going to go wash my hands. Sort of. And we'll try it with the uh, motor. <laughs> Back to the car? Yeah, back to the car. Okay, so now we're going to assemble our window regulator here. Uh, we have our motor. It sits in here like this. Just got to get the gear to mesh up. It goes in there. Uh, and our screws, they go through like this. screw into the plastic and there's a, basically a safety nut on the back again I was using 9 millimeter for this but it's not a 9 it's probably a 5 16 or something like that well no it'd be a little bit bigger than 5 16 I'm not sure what it is exactly Plug this in. Not that. This. assembled, tested, now we just got to get it back in the door. Um, and to do that, it's, we're basically just reversing the order of operation that we took it out in, so... Bend it. Get it in here. Oops. Got this little bracket that goes on the back here. Uh, we're gonna have to find another bolt for this, believe it or not, because uh, we only have four bolts that came with the kit. And this uh, this requires five. So I mean, I guess it's probably fine without this. Better to have it stabilized. Okay, let's steal this off of here. Okay. Okay, so I'm just putting this bracket on here like this. Tighten this up here. Okay. Best we can. Okay, there we go. Alright, now that we haven't forgotten anything, let's tip her back up the way where she's supposed to be. Damn it. That goes in there. This goes on. 
behind you here. Okay, we'll do the rest of them. They're in the bag. They're in the bag. Oh shit. Oh my god. Why do you hate me so much? Oh man. There it is. Look at that. Goes, another one that goes there, which is also kind of the same predicament as this thing. So it feels the same way on the back. So I don't know, maybe this one would be better, maybe like this. Yeah, I think that's well, we're gonna have to do that. So I'm gonna tighten this guy up here. See what's going on. There's like no room in here. Now I'm going to put the window regulator down just enough so that it lines up with the window. So we're going to go down. Oops, too much. All right, so that should be okay. Now, I'll put the bolts in here. It's kind of, yeah. We're gonna have to adjust this a little bit once we untape the window. We'll get the bolts started at least. So it doesn't go anywhere. have to adjust this. We'll see what happens. Let me put the window up in here. Okay. That's nice and tight. So, let's see how we did. Boy. A little chatter, huh? Alright, and that's the end. How it's supposed to be. <laughs> or is it like leaning a little bit? Yeah, this has got a little slop in it, huh? Oops. We've got about that much lateral play in it. doesn't look like there's anything we can do about it. Unless maybe this is supposed to be here? Right? I mean, it just looks like this thing is a little bullshit. I mean, that's right in there. There's basically no guide seal in this. Nope. So it's kind of just... I mean, it always was kind of loose, but... There's no way that was supposed to be. Yeah, this needs to go that way. Definitely 100%. Otherwise, it's just not in the track. Basically. Okay. 
this, we, we need like a new piece. I think it's done. Donezo. What? functions how it should function. Okay, so we're back. Um, we sourced another nut and bolt, small one for uh, this uh, missing uh, bolt for the window regulator here. Um, it's a little bit different than the other ones, but it's still 10 millimeter and we can, and it's the right size, so whatever. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten this guy up and then we're gonna put our cover plates in uh, and then we'll continue. So I'm just gonna tighten this thing up sure that these are oriented correctly because this is important um, as you can see so uh, this guy sits here here I'm kind of going by the rust patterns so this guy I believe goes like this but anyway these these things will have to line up so if this is backwards we'll know Are we lined up? I guess so, right? Yeah. As lined up as it'll ever be. Alright, so now we're going to put our uh, splash shield in place here. This guy goes over the door handle. This thing we're going to pull out temporarily. You can see it kind of sticks like this. We have these two clips here hold this piece in place on the top. Ooh. out through one of these holes. There's a slit cut in it here. What the hell is... Oh no. Oh no. What? I forgot. <laughs> we need that. <laughs> okay, so this comes through here. I, th I want to say this... Although no, because this has got to go... Mm -hmm. Inside that, right? Yep. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it probably comes out here. Hmm, that makes sense. Because there's a perforation in it. Like that. Okay, now, a lot of our adhesive is bad around the outside of this, so it's not really gonna stay in place too nicely. But it's good enough. Then the door panel, once it's pressed on it, will hold it on there. Okay, so we've got our our um, window. Our, That's sorry, the our, lock. Yeah. Our lock, our window um, switch uh, piece here, our connector, and our mirror adjustment. So uh, the next step is then to put the door panel back on it. Speaking of door panels. What we actually did, if you remember from the uh, original, we came in here and we put two screws in place to hold the oops, hold the handle much nicer in there now because you remember it was all floppy and nasty and broken. So we kind of just improvised something with some, uh, these are some M5.8 uh, screws that we cut down 
some nuts just to make this sturdier. Um, but anyway, if you're having that problem, which you might be. Um, okay, so this again goes into here with a um, Allen key. All right, so let's go secure that in place. So the trick to getting this door panel back on is there's a ledge all along here, and that's a corresponding ledge along this. So you want to line up your uh, what do you call it here? Your um, lock, your lock indicator. edge uh, indicator, <laughs> and uh, uh, put her over. All right, now. I gotta get this in here first. And you might wanna pull the wires out first too. Yep. Hold on. This one's not so bad, but the other one. Yeah. This guy. It's gonna be a problem without it. So this comes through here. You can see there was a clip that held it on to the body at some point, but not anymore. It's broken. Uh, so which can be a bit tricky. We may actually have to put the window down. Um, that does help. Yeah. So that's in now. Gotta get this freaking thing over. There it is. See? Now it's riding up against the window. That's where you want it. We got our. Th this is out. This is out. I'm gonna pull this out from behind the. Or actually, I guess that goes kind of like that. Tuck it in. Now, before you really slam on this, you want to make sure all your holes line up, because these pieces are adjustable, and you can kind of slide them around a little bit on the door card. So before you go hitting it. You want to make sure everybody goes in the holes like this. You can see it. So he's lined up, and you want to just go all the way around the door panel. And make sure you don't break the clip when you push on it. That's a big problem. So I'm going to go over here, have a look see. All right, so that one's in. This one's in. All right, there we go. Uh, I got another one down here. I got to just adjust slightly. Okay, that's in there. Okay, now, it's really, <clears throat> it's really incredibly simple. You just do one of these, and you can see it's in there. <laughs> so if you just hit it like that, but again, make sure it's in the hole before you hit it. Like that. There's one here, okay, one here, one here, okay, and our door panel is installed. I'm going to go ahead and put our switch back. Uh, this guy goes like this. All right, now, before we do anything, we're going to double check. back up without any issues. One last time. Okay, good. Alright, so this has just got two clips on either side. I'm just going to try and put this connector on as best we can. Actually, one other thing I should probably do. Do the rear ones work or should yeah. I bother? Hasn't been used in a while. <laughs> Needs to be exercised. Works a lot better. Okay, so everything works. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this thing back in. Okay, there we go. All right, now uh, next step is to put our uh, trim panel on here. Here he is. 
This guy goes through here. Slide him in there. Okay, now we put our screws back in. So that's again, there's four screws that hold this guy to the uh, door. Oh, here we go. Looks good. Okay, so if we, you remember, uh, the tall pin is terminal A on this guy, so he just goes like this. So we've got our lock actuator uh, connector on here, and then you just kind of spin these hold of it down on top. Yep, like so. And that kind of just locks it in place. Alright, so remember you have one and you have two. And they slot into here and here. So what you do, you kind of get her in here. Oops. Alright. And then you kind of slide back like that. And now it's in there. And we gotta put our screws in the center here which so these are you see they're the chrome ones they go in here just because if you're looking down you don't see a disgusting ass screw you see sort of a nice not really shiny thing <laughs> oh I didn't get that one in there all the way see that so like I said it's very important that you get these uh Get these things all the way in. Put a little weight on it. Yeah, there it is. That all the way in? Looks like it. Mm -hmm. We'll see if the screws fit. That's the ultimate test. <laughs> this is where it helps to have a longer Phillips head screwdriver. See what I mean? Longer screwdriver equals a lot not easier to do that. Now, we need to put our trim bezel back in here, which has a single screw. And then we gotta put our two screws in here. And the lock indicator. Oh right, and the lock indicator's gotta go back on. Alright, so we're gonna put the last screw in our handle here. or the uh, handle for the, the bezel for the handle here just kind of slips in sets in here like so we got this single chrome oval countersunk screw that goes in here sneak your screwdriver over it don't tighten this too much because this is plastic and you don't want to crack it Alright, so that's good. Now the final piece of the puzzle, well no, I'm sorry. Second to last piece of the puzzle is our uh, lock actuator indicator. That just screws all the way down until it stops. There it is. Alright, now we're going to put our little covers on here. And these two should just slide very nicely in. There shouldn't be any resistance. You just clip in. Don't hit them. They, they don't need that. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, so that'll do it for this episode of Hoover Gear. That's how you uh, replace your uh, window actuator motor in any one of these 1980s GMB bodies. So this will be the same for a, a Caprice, an Oldsmobile, a Buick, a Sabre, um, a Cadillac, it's the same idea. Very similar. Maybe the trim will be a little bit different, but the window regulator and the motor, that'll be the same. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching.